California leads the nation with an uninsured rate of 24%. Because of the growing need for services, private support is crucial to the future of the clinic and the health of our whole community. Patients have come to trust this community resource because of the quality of the individualized care that they receive, and also because it has had a real impact on their lives. Well, thinking about 50 years is, is exciting and it's also humbling. And I just think about all the people who came before. Uh, there have been so many of them and we're talking providers, donors, and everyone who's helped out along the way. Uh, and it really is astounding that this has been going for 50 years and the, the cumulative effect of that impact has been absolutely huge. I can only say we are standing on a lot of shoulders uh, to get where we are today. So uh, it's been quite a, quite a ride. There's a very strong shared vision for health for Marin County between Marin County Health and Human Services, where I work, and Marin Community Clinics um, that goes back decades. I love thinking about, you know, 50 years ago as we honor this anniversary. You know, that first day, and what that must have been like for that first doc to show up in a church basement with that first patient. Um, and really that captures the essence of what Marin Community Clinics has really maintained now for 50 years. 1972, I worked in a uh, doctor's office for family practice, and one of our doctors was a volunteer at the Episcopal Church in Mill Valley. I'll never forget it because he would leave early in order to be able to go down to meet the people that were coming for help. Well, I think the services at the beginning were very rudimentary. Uh, the setting was without um, extensive uh, support systems. You know, the waiting area was filled and it was like, it was all this one space, I think, if I remember right, in different areas where people did different things, but all in one space. And it was so uh, rustic, say. Um, I remember being in the Fairfax Church and trying to see patients and having sweat pouring down my face, but carrying on and seeing patients and doing what we could. In different churches, it really moved around from, you know, Mill Valley and Fairfax and San Rafael and maybe Novato. And we did it, uh, you know, one nurse and me and, uh, and often sometimes a sheet on a, on a clothesline sort of thing to give some privacy to the, to the uh, physical exam. So we didn't, we, we didn't have any place to, to, to do these exams and did them in the evening, like from seven to nine, once a month or every couple of months. And after 10 years of that, it became clear that church basements and volunteer labor was not gonna cut it. So it so happened that at the time, or in general, had two um, oversized trailers. The county contributed money and some staffing, and um, various other agencies contributed some help. But it had amazing um, context, because of course the hospital was on the same grounds. Getting to the clinic on the hill was huge, because it gave a very specific address it was certainly, you know, much more centralized, much easier for people to get to, you know, in terms of public transit. And it provided essentially a home for the clinic and the clinicians and all the administrative staff. And you actually had a building that became there. So it was really a very, very important move for the clinic. You have to realize that before the clinic moved onto the hill, Care was very episodic. You know, it's Tuesday in the basement of a church here and Thursday in the basement of a church there. And a lot of times, because they didn't really have any other options, people would go to the emergency room. And that has impacts on everybody because it doesn't matter if you have the best insurance in the world, if the emergency room is overcrowded and the staff is over busy and stressed out, that's affecting everyone's care. It's also driving costs up for everyone. So being able to then provide a actual medical home for patients, everybody in the entire community benefits from that. The trailers were fine. They were two double wide trailers. Were they beautiful? No. Were they clean and wonderful? Yes. Were they a vast improvement over the church basements? Yes. 
And um, the prior CEO got and applied to the feds for federally qualified health care status, which is a big deal still in the whole country. The impact on the clinic, its care, its expectations, etc., was enormous. It brought amazing um, money. Uh, we could then bill for services and we could then do things that we could not do prior. But most importantly, we had quality standards and we had expectations. What the FQHC, Federally Qualified Health Center, designation allowed the clinic to do was get cost-based reimbursement for seeing Medi-Cal patients. So not only did the clinic get its costs covered for doing it, that money also allowed the clinic then to be able to serve populations, you know, be they undocumented immigrants or for other reasons who did not have Medi-Cal, it basically subsidized that care as well. So that was the real game changer. It, there was a lot of growing pains that went on because now what the clinic really needed to do was ramp up all of its services. So they had to hire more physicians, they had to hire more staff. And it was a time when you know, it was a very, like a balloon that you're rapidly inflating. And it actually, within a few years after the time we were off the board, uh, the clinic had outgrown that space on the hill on the Marine General campus and then moved down the street to Five Bonaire Road because the growth was just that quick. The clinic, when it was in those two trailers, was just full to bursting. I mean, it just felt like you had to, you walk in there and you were, had to be careful not to run into the, a bunch of charts over here and, you know, people coming out of an exam room here. There was really, uh, it was really cramped, to put it mildly. And, and then when it moved and modernized its medical record system, I think that that made just a huge difference. Uh, that inspired confidence that you were getting, uh, you know, modern care and seeing people in a facility that had the resources to provide that care. And we know that the Marin Community Clinic serves about 80% of Marin County's safety net population. So these are Marin County residents who are accessing health care at Marin Community Clinics uh, who are primarily insured by Medi-Cal, our low-income Medicaid program in California, or who are uninsured. We also have chosen to support Marin Community Clinics because we know, and we've seen this really um, starkly through the pandemic, trust in your healthcare provider is absolutely essential. Having insurance alone does not mean access. And what we're, we're learning more and more in the field of health, that trust in your healthcare provider is actually one of the most essential factors for improved health outcomes. And we know that Marin Community Clinics is an organization that's trusted by the patients who choose to receive their care here. The Marin Community Clinics have, over these years, with all of you and all of the folks that, that came before you and, and, and work with you now, to build the kind of community trust that you have, that the Marin Community Clinics really are an island of trust. And when you think about it in our community, it's one of, it's one of, the, one of the really sad and, and challenging aspects of, of our time, is that there are so many people and certainly so many of your patients and your, your, your patients and their families who don't really have many places in their lives that are trusting. And the fact that you've, you've developed a, a kind of understanding and empathy and have, have exhibited and manifested the trust that those patients and families can bring to you is a great tribute. I saw how much it meant to people to have help when they needed it. I saw how much a family practice model meant to the individual as well as the families to be able to look at the total person and understand what they needed. This is what the clinics was turning into a family practice. Not that it ignored individuals, but it looked at the whole person and all the uh, facilities and um, needs that they needed 
to be able to have a good, healthy, stable life. Being able to continue to provide services for the community, um, you know, through the uh, donations that the clinic gets, I think is, is crucial for, for everybody to be a, a healthy Marine, right? If they're able to go to the clinic, you know, you have less people going to the ER. If we get people to go get a dental check, you know, less people end up with complications that we know cause medical complications as well. So, and it's the right thing to do, you know, to be able to support the, the underserved the underserved community and make them part of the community. You know, it's just, we're not going to be providing all the services ongoing. It's just to help them get over whatever is going on right now. You know, having that, like, I've had patients that, you know, I was their case manager and down the road I see them, they have Kaiser or they had a job and they bought a house, you know. So people, we need to be able to support that process of being able to help them get to where they need to get. Some of the challenges that our patients have when they come here, we don't know what, what it took for them to come into the site. We have a lot of patients that come in on foot, so they're walking oftentimes in the heat or the cold or the rain. And so understanding all of those elements um, that take someone to enter our doors makes me motivated to do the work that I do. Really, Marin Community Clinics is rooted in just a fundamental and simple value that every person deserves the highest attainable standard of health. Our mission for Health and Human Services is that we want to promote and protect the health, well-being, and self-sufficiency for all in Marin. And that little word, all, is important. Um, and it really is the primary challenge of achieving that mission, is really how do you make sure that every single person has access to the highest attainable standard of health. And we are always looking at ways to expand access for the community to various services. Access is always an issue, and making access more convenient can sometimes involve investing in technology like telehealth or whatever, because a lot of our patients may not have a car. They may not be able to leave a job that pays an hourly rate for three hours to go to a medical appointment because they're on public transportation. So a lot of these solutions to access often involve technology investments or other investments that we absolutely need the community to help us with. Because um, there's so many uncertainty, you know, to the type of population that we serve that um, just knowing that they will have a medical home, a dental home, uh, will ease their anxiety level and will just kind of uh, give them um, peace that they'll have, you know, <laughs> that if something goes wrong, that um, if anything happens, that um, we'll still be there to, to care for, for them. Suffice to say that most of our patients have challenges above and beyond what most average people in our county deal with. Healthcare is so foundational to health, well-being and someone being successful and accomplishing what they want to do in their lives that a lot of people take it for granted until they don't have it, until they're sick and they're going through a problem. And, and that's where we really believe that it doesn't matter who you are, that you should have the right to be healthy and to try to regain that state of good health and well-being so that you can be the best version of you that you can be. What I see as a success of the clinic over these years is love. It is an operation of love. The staff, the clinicians, the county, everybody has loved the clinic because the clinic has loved them. And the other thing is commitment to make it right, to get the right care to the right people for the right reasons under the right circumstances. I think that the importance of this clinic is as important to this community today as it was in 1973. Because what it does, it illustrates that a community recognizes the need of the people that live in it and it gives the community the opportunity to make it a thriving, healthy, and compassionate community that we all deserve to live in.